What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of my, well, actually, um, welcome to the first of my three re-reviews I'm about to do. Before I start, I want to say rest in peace to Sean Price. Um, it's been reported that he passed passed away this morning. And um, if you guys don't know who Sean Price is, he's an MC. He's an MC. I believe he's actually, I believe he's from Brooklyn, if I'm not mistaken. He was actually, um, he got to start as one half of the duo Helter Skelter, which was part of the boot camp click collective, you know, with Black Moon, Smith and West Sun, original Gun Clappers. And so it was him, but back at that time he was known as Rock and Ruck. Rock, um, and the other member was Ruck. Um, they dropped the first album, Nocturnal, which is a classic, classic album. I need to get my hands on that. But like to be honest with you, um, although I like Sean Price and that duo, my favorite member was always Ruck. I don't know, he just had that more grimy voice. But once I review Nocturnal, I'm gonna get into that. And so they dropped another album. What was the other album? The one I dropped in 1998. I think it was called Magnum Force, something like that. And I'm not really a huge fan of that album. And so I think like. They broke up around that time, and Sean Price, he dropped, he had a solo work, you know, like, he dropped, like, um, his first album, first solo album, Monkey Bars, back in 2005, Jesus Peace Superstar, 2007, and, um, I think Barbecue Sauce, his last studio album to date, 2013, and he, when I read up, he was working on another album, he's about to drop another album later on this month. I think songs in the key of price, so that was actually supposed to come out. I think about later on this month too, so it's pretty sad that like one of the greatest MCs, you know, and he, his solo work. I liked his solo work. It was very consistent though, and you know, now he's gone, y'all. Rest in peace to Mr. Sean Price. And so the first review I'm about to do today is um. Michael Jackson's Thriller album released in 1982 on Epic Records. Um, yeah, you guys know, everybody know, well knows who Michael Jackson is. He's a singer, like, he was he started as a member of the Jackson 5. Um, he cut out his first solo album while he was in the Jackson 5. Um, got to be there in 1971. Yeah, so. Everyone knows, I'm not really going through his biography. The reason why I'm review, see y'all, these are the albums I'm about to do the re reviews on. Just to let you get a heads up. These three albums, because YouTube, they blocked my album, they deleted the sound, they blocked my reviews and shit like that. So, I don't know, they've been on my ass a lot lately. But yeah, both um, singles I'm known for are. The Girl Is Mine, that was like the first single, Billie Jean, Beat It, Want to Be Starting Something, Human Nature, Pretty Young Thing, Thriller. And so like, you know, everyone knows it's the best selling album to date, um, love the album cover by the way, like, very iconic album cover, um, Take you to the inside booklet. Shit, damn. Right, you just have like all the song lyrics right here, and um, like a drawing, I think, like a drawing is like a like a Michael and shit like that. So that's what I miss about certain albums, though. I miss like how you have the song lyrics printed. On the album, like most MCs don't really, most like artists in general don't do that anymore. But one thing that like I've noticed about this album is like the lyrical content is more s darker in a way. Like it, it wasn't like it's not like like dark dark. It's like he more matured his lyrical content from Off the Wall, which Off the Wall is actually my favorite album from Michael Jackson. By the way, this actually this part of my second favorite. Um, yeah, and the thing about it is, because he was going, like, around that time, he, I 
think it was going through some depression around that time, if I'm not mistaken. And he just wanted to break through, like, do different things than what he was used to do in the Jackson 5. So, yeah, and, um, guest appearances. There's, um, Paul McCartney, Vincent Price, and, um, Eddie Van Halen. So those are the guest appearances on the album. And also about this album, um, like, Rod Temperton, um, you know, he, he wrote, like, he, he wrote a lot of songs off this album. Jackson, I think he wrote about four songs. And, you know, so, yeah, Rod Temperton, very, he did his thing on this album with songwriting, like, a lot of people know him for, he was a member of Heat Wave, which, you know, that funk R&B group like the 70s to like the early to mid 80s very dope group by the way Und- kind of slept under my opinion all right now let me get started with the songs um track number one i want, want to be starting something very dope song that's like a nice way to start the album i love that beat. Um, Believe it or not, this is actually, um, this is actually, this song was actually for Latoya Jackson. I think I mentioned this in the other review. It was actually for Latoya Jackson, but, um, I guess like, Jackson, Michael likes it so much that he, he put it for himself. And also, um, a little trivia about the song. The song was best known for that, Mama Say, Mama Say, and Makusa. Um, and so, he actually got that. He actually got that from um this I think it's like singer he goes he goes by the name of, um Manny Debongo and he used that in one in one of his songs and so but actually Jackson he's I think Michael was saying I'ma say it one more time I'm not gonna stop it's just that he said it so fast he sounded like I'ma say I'ma say my kusa and so I read that he actually the dude um Manny Debongo he actually sued Michael. Um, for using this, for using that chant, because he wanted some praise for it too. And he also, um, I read that he actually sued Rihanna too, because Rihanna came out with that one song back in, um, 2007, and she actually said that chant too, so, you guys know, you guys know, so I'm not going to say what song it is though, but, yeah, track number one, I want to be starting something. Track number two, um, Baby Be Mine. Very smooth kind of like song, kind of like that song you like if you're going out to party and you like you drive, you driving and shit like that. And that's kind of, that's that's the, that's that's the perfect song for you to play. Rod Temperton, he um wrote the lyrics to that song too. Track number three, "The Girl Is Mine" featuring Paul McCartney. Um, that song was alright. Um, it was a, it was it was okay. Not really the biggest biggest fan of that song. Um, uh, track number four, "Thriller." One of, you know, one of Michael's best songs. Although I admit the music video is really more famous than the song itself, because you know, everybody knows a music video, and I love that had the dark, the darkness around that song, and um, that song features Vincent Price, and you know, he does this, he does his spoken word part like in like the last third of the song though. Um, this song has actually been sampled by a lot of people from Public Enemy to NWA, so it was mostly on um, Vincent Price's lap that they sampled. Next song is Beat It featuring Eddie Van Halen. Oh yeah, this is dope, dope song right here. Like this is really the, I believe this was really the song that really brought the album success. If I'm not mistaken, this one and Billie Jean. Um. Little trivia though, um, Eddie, I read that Eddie Van Halen was actually supposed to be in the music video, but um, label politics, they didn't want, I think they didn't want him in the video for some strange odd reason. So that's why like in a video, he wasn't even present in the video, they just played his part. But he still like appeared in concerts, you know, with Michael, 
So if, like do his signature guitar solo in that song too. And this song actually won um rec record of the year. Excuse me. Hello. I'm so, 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 so sorry about that. I had to help my grandma with something. But, um, where was I? Yeah. So, B did actually won a couple awards. Like, he won two Grammys for that, like, Record of the Year, Nail Rock Vocal, and two American Music Awards. Very, um, dope song right there. Next song is Billie Jean. And I don't, I need, I don't even need to go in depth with that song. That's like, one of his most signature songs right there. Um, basically what I got from that song is you gotta watch these women. And like he's talking about how he met this one girl. She invited her up to, to her bedroom. But let you know it like, um, cause she said, let you know she said the baby is his and shit like that. Um, yeah. He actually wrote that song about, I think, about this one woman that used to stalk him in the early days, so. And he, she's write letters about him and all, and all that shit. Yeah, and this is really, I love the song about that bass line, that ding, 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 ding. I love that shit. That, that can we really tell like he was maturing with that song. Um, and of course, everybody knows that song, but he did that Moonwalk and the Motown 25, so dope song right there. Check number seven, Human Nature. I love this song, the, one of the most underrated songs off this album. And you know, those lyrics, the lyrics like this really like very introspective from Michael. Track number eight, Pretty Young Thing. Um, that song was actually originally for James Ingram. And <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, so that song in particular actually had Latoya and Janet like singing background vocals with that song. So that's a pretty good song. I love that song. Um a lot of people know that Kanye West actually sample that song and I'm not on on um he sampled that song that's all I'm gonna say and that song of the album is Lady Lady in My Life which is my favorite song off the album um one of his best ballads in my opinion and that's all the time I have you know I'm sorry if it's like you know I'm not trying to like go in in depth cause you know I don't know how YouTube would do this but this is a dope album this is a very very good album and one thing about this album is like if he really bridged the gap between R&B, soul, rock, um, pop like around this time like and this is like and like <coughs> damn excuse me he really bridged the gap between those genres and he made it like this masterpiece right here because Let's be real though. When he he was like really the first black on the probably the first he was the first black artist on MTV and so a lot of white kids, you know, were watching him and shit like that because you gotta be real. MTV they do this thing where they were, they were, at that time it's like the only black artists that were playing on M T V was like Michael Jackson or Prince and shit like that, so and so it was after that they, they had like a four way of black artists coming to MTV. And yeah, this, and I'm not really surprised, this is like the most best selling album to date. I'm not surprised. I mean, everybody should own this album. Um, he, they actually released um, a 25th anniversary edition of his album, Throw 25, where it has like 
original song, but also has remixes of the songs too. Um, yeah, the remixes were all right. It wasn't really anything special. But other than that, this is a um, Michael Jackson's Thriller, 1982, must have in your collection. And that's all the time on this review. Stay tuned. Peace.